Let's get some insights on the news that's shaping the markets. And for that, we welcome in Jay Hadfield, founder and CEO, portfolio manager at Infrastructure Capital Advisors. Jay, thanks so much for joining us on this Independence Day Eve. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Caroline, for having me on. All right. So I think, you know, the big question in terms of this market, obviously stocks kind of searching for direction today, but no doubts about it. It's been a very strong first half of the year. Do you think the rally can hold into the second half? We do. We think we have um, some good catalysts coming up. You mentioned in an earlier piece, we have, uh, you know, the employment report later in the week. We think that employment might be moderating. So that would be good for Fed pop, potential Fed pause. CPI and PPI, the biggest roll off in financial history. So those are going to decline substantially. PPI will be close to zero. So we think that'll be positive and give the doves some ammunition to argue against um, a rate increase, although there's an 86% chance priced in. We think that's too high, but prob still probably will be a hike. And then most importantly, though, is earnings season. And we think the reality of earnings will help the market broaden out the rally. And you see that with the banks. The typically trading outside of earnings season, everything gets overdone. People buy too much tech, sell too many financials and REITs. So we think that there'll be a broader base rally and we'll potentially break over the 4,500 target that we had initially had this year for the S&P. Yeah, I was taking a look. Your revised target is now 4,500 to possibly 5,000 on the S&P. So let's talk about your Fed expectations, because you mentioned, obviously, the jobs report comes on Friday. The Fed will be paying close attention to that. The next Fed meeting, not until the end of this month, you say could be paused, most likely a hike. But then what? Do you think one and done? Or do you think that, you know, to get to 5,000 on the S&P, uh, that could happen regardless if the Fed has to hike a few more times? Well, I think obviously for to keep rallying, the Fed has to stop. We do think this is a fundamentally flawed Fed in that they <clears throat> stick to their Phillips curve framework, which just focus on the labor market when they should be focusing on the money supply, housing and energy prices as leading indicators and real time indicators like PPI, which is going to be near zero when it's reported. CPI-R, which is our index that adjusts CPI for shelter. So if they were properly interpreting the data, then they would definitely pause. But we think that the evidence will be just so overwhelming, even this Fed will figure it out that they've done enough, or if not too much, and, and inflation is really plummeting. Uh, maybe not this meeting, but certainly there is a, a August they'd have off, so they have more and more data by September. So then we think there will be a pause and that this AI boom is, is for real and that could take us above our 4,500 target. Yet I was looking at your oil forecast and you're expecting oil to trade between 75 and $95 a barrel while the Ukrainian war continues. That's higher than where it's currently trading. So that sounds inflationary to me. Well, that would be, that's a good point that um, if it really went right to the top of the range in short order, that would be an inflationary you know, s signal. But keep in mind that since the banking crisis, oil came from 80 down to 70, and that's just now filtering into the indices. That's why we think this is a flawed Fed. Like they should look at that and say, oh, well, that's, there's about a 5% bleed through of energy prices to core. So if we have a 15% drop in short order, that's going to take core down 75 basis points. But you're right, there's a risk if oil returns to what we think is the fair value on supply and demand. Right now, we think it's depressed by news out of China. <clears throat> and also, there is a rotation in the market where when tech rallies, people sell energy, even oil. So we think it's below its fair value, but we don't really see it skyrocketing to the top of the range anytime soon. So let's talk about how you're putting money to work. Do you think we're going to continue to see this broadening out of the rally, or would you rather stick with what's working, the tech and the AI plays? Well, we would we would barbell it. So we do think NVIDIA is probably sandbagging their earnings estimate and their revenue, because no one, if they, no one is really going to guide to up 50% if they think they're going to miss. So that we think that's probably conservative and it's conservatively valued. So we do think there's more room to run, particularly on the supplier side of the AI equation. But we don't think that all most retail investors have way too much tech. We do think REITs, financials, 
preferred stock with great dividends are undervalued. Um, so we would have a barbell approach. We'll have some large cap dividend stocks that are, you know, down for the year actually, and then have some fairly valued AI companies that do have near term revenue and earnings, not necessarily the profitless companies. It's more on the on the come. And what about in terms of fixed income, if you think the Fed is nearing the end in terms of those rate hikes? Well, the most we think the most undervalued sector of fixed income um, is preferred stocks. Many of them are floating rates, so there's upside as they flip from fixed to floating. They're, they're discounted relative to high yield. And if you do believe the economy is not going to go into recession, which we strongly have said over the last year and continue to say, then we think preferred stocks will be the number one performing fixed income security in that environment. So we're recommending that. And they are well below par. So you have kind of equity upside and um, fixed income type, um, you know, dividend yields. All right. We have to leave it there. But thanks so much for sharing those picks. Jay Hatfield, Infrastructure Capital Advisors, thanks so much. Thanks, Caroline.